How's it going everyone? Um, it's John again. Uh, today I'm going to do a little bit of a video or a demonstration on Ansible for automation. Now Ansible is actually a really really useful tool for network automation for your monitoring and your configuration. It will essentially allow you to simultaneously log into multiple devices at the same time and do all your show runs and blah de blah and it makes everything way easier than having to do it manually bit by bit, device by device. So essentially let's just go and do it. Before I do that I will actually make a point. In this demonstration it's an introduction, it's not going to be um, covering everything. I'm not going to be logging into the switches for simplicity. The devices which I'll be using will just be the routers and I'm not going to be using the playbooks. Now for Ansible the playbooks are pretty much where the real power lies uh, with the software. But since it's just an introduction, just to give you a little bit of a taster, I'm just going to be using the ad hoc commands just to let you see what Ansible can do at a very basic level. So with that said, let's just kick on and do it then. So the basic network here we've got on the left, we've got the 10.0.0.0 slash 24, that's going to be the local LAN. To the right of that, the 172.16.0.0, that should be a slash 16, the RIP version 2 network. Below that, we've got the OSPF area 0, the backbone. Down to the right, OSPF area 6, which is a totally stubby area, which is going to cut out the type 5 and type 3 LSAs. To the left of that, we've got OSPF area 7, which is a stub area, which is going to cut out the type 5 LSAs. And to the very left of that, we've got EIGRP autonomous system number 66. Right, so let's kick on and do this then. So if we go to the actual network automation box, a basic Linux box, which is configured for Ansible, what I need to do is, well, do you know what? Before I say that, I better show you. CD Etsy, go into that directory, and what I need to do is edit the host file, which I've already done. So from the normal defaults, I have added in these files. So these configurations are essentially the IP addresses of each of the devices. So 172.16.1.1 is the IP address of router 1, 2.2 is router 2. So essentially what happens is this is going to kind of act like DNS. When I type in ping R1, it's going to resolve it to that IP address of 172.16.1.1 and the ping should therefore be successful. So write that out. X. Oh. Let's demonstrate that. So if I do ping R1. We've got a connection because it's looking up the IP address. So, I will actually make a point. I don't know if I said this already or not, but with uh, Ansible, it's actually agentless. It doesn't require the actual devices which you're going to be logging into to be running Ansible. All, uh, all that's required is that you have Ansible configured on the actual host device, which you'll be doing the actual monitoring from, and uh, each of the devices which you're logging into are configured for SSH, which I've done that. So, every device on the network or the router, should I say, not the switches, have been configured with SSH version 2 and the username is John Privilege 15 to go to Elevated Privileges straight away and the password for each device is Cisco for basic uniformity to keep things quite simple for the demonstration. So, now, what I need to do now is to go back to this. LS, now I've got these two files here. The first one is the Ansible configuration. What this is going to do is configure the defaults. So the basic inventory, it's going to look into a file called host. That's the next thing I'm going to show you. Host key checking is set to false. So when the SSH keys are going to cross, there's going to be no checking. It'll just log straight in. And we've got a timer of five. So let's escape that and we'll do nano on the hosts. Now what I've done here is configured. See the brackets here, the square brackets? These are groups so i've grouped things together to make things simple so as a group routers which are all the routers they are one group in of themselves so that's router one two three right up to router eight they are all routers now i've made a smaller group called rip which are just the two routers which are uh, which are participating in rip which is r1 r2 below that we've got ospf which is going to be r2 three four uh, and six and 7 as well, sorry, if I just scroll down a wee bit. So that's OSPF. And below that, we've got our EIGRP network. And the routers participating in that are routers 3, 5, and 8, which you can see. Oh. Move that down. You can see router 3, 5, and 8. So, um, 
let's just escape that. Oh. And we'll cap hosts. So that's all fine. Clear you. Right. So, first things first. Do you know what? I'm going to copy this. This is a useful little tool I've got to grep the output. I'm going to just save that. Copy that. You'll see why that's useful in a wee minute. So let's use the tool Ansible and just keep this video relatively uh, relatively brief. So we'll see how we go. So Ansible, and we will do router one. The module we will be using is raw. The argument is going to be the actual command which we're going to deploy to the device, and we'll just do a basic what show IP int brief. And the user is going to be John, which is me, and K is prompt for a password. Enter. Type in the SSH password, which is going to be Cisco. And now we actually have the output of that device. So that's the show IP interface brief of router1. And you can see it's a success. So why is that so good? Why not just... SSH right into the device itself. Well, because the idea of automation is for scalability, really. So imagine having to manually log into each and every device and compare outputs with other outputs and go back and forth and back and forth, especially when you're trying to troubleshoot problems. That becomes quite tiresome and it's quite laboring. It's unnecessary. So with a tool like Ansible, what you could do is do Ansible and use these kind of groups which I've configured. So group will use as routers, which is going to be all the devices. Use the same uh, module, which is raw. We shall do um, argument will be, we'll do a show IP root and we'll use the username is John Stow and the K to prompt for the password. Enter Cisco And now you see we've got the output of all the devices. So that's router 8, routing table, router 7, router 6, so on and so forth. Now, like I said, it's actually a little bit difficult to read that. It's not the most, you know, friendly in the eyes. And this little grep command, which I've copied and pasted, which I'll be reusing, is quite useful for that. So what I can do also... Let's do another group. Let's just do the Ansible and we'll do what? We'll just use the OSPF and we'll use the same module, which is raw. The argument is going to be for this one, we'll just do a show IP OSPF neighbor, say. And the user is going to be John K, prompt for a password. And I'm also going to create a file, which is going to save the output into this file. And we'll call this show OSPF just for whatever. So it'll prompt me for the password. Cisco again. And rather than actually displaying the output, it's just going to save it into a file called show OSPF. So if I use this little grep tool, which I can thing read up. How about you actually copy and paste it, John? That'll help. <laughs> uh, right, copy you. And I'll type in that file. So now it's going to do is print out. And this is highlighting. That grep is actually going to highlight with red all the successes, which are going to correspond to the router. So it's quite easy to actually see. So all of the routers which are participating in OSPF, we've logged into all of them. We've done a show IP OSPF neighbor on all of the devices simultaneously. And we've printed out the actual output. So there's router 2's IP OSPF neighbor. Router 3. Router 4's there, Router 6, Router 7, and it's all there. It makes things so much easier in that sense. So let's try another one. Let's just do a uh, what? We'll do Ansible on the EIGRP routers, and we'll use the same module, which is raw, and the argument for this time will be, I don't know what, show IP EIGRP topology, and we'll do... The user is still going to be John, 
prompt for a password and we'll create a file called eigrp top prompt for the password cisco again enter now it's going to log into all the devices simultaneously yet again copy the input to an a file called eigrp top and we can use oh, use that lock command again why does that keep doing that <laughs> I don't know why I need to keep copying and pasting that. This is just a wee bit of a, a bug in GNS3. Shouldn't be happening, but nevertheless. And we'll do. So now we've got the actual output of the show EIGRP topology for all the EIGRP routers which are participating in EIGRP. So there we go. There's router 3's show IP EIGRP topology. There's router 5s, router 8, so on. So you can just keep doing this. And again, this is just for your show commands I'm doing this for. In later videos, I'll be using playbooks and also doing actual configuration. So let's just try another one for a bit of fun. So we'll do Ansible, and we want to have a look at a RIP router. So we'll do Ansible RIP. Module is still raw. And the argument this time will do... I don't know, show CDP neighbor. And the user is still John, of course. Prompt for a password, and we'll call this text file CDP rip. Prompt for a password, type in Cisco. It will now log into the devices simultaneously. You're getting probably the drill of this. Take the output and pop it into a file called CDP rip. So we can hopefully, let's better copy and paste this time, it's still doing that. I don't know why I need to keep copying this. Ordinarily, you should just be able to just... And do CDP rip. And it's going to log in and show you all the... So there's router 1, which is participating in rip. That's its show CDP neighbor. Router 2 is also participating in rip. That's its show CDP neighbor. And you can just keep doing this. Like I say, it's, it makes things so much easier. So, for example, Ansible routers and we'll use module raw argument we'll do a show ip int brief and we will exclude the unassigned we'll use the user is john we'll prompt for a password and we'll call it show ip brief prompt for a password i'm going to preempt it this time and actually copy and paste this i've learned my lesson <laughs> copy you And we'll do show IP brief. And what it's going to do is essentially show the IP addresses on all of the routers which we've configured. So that's router 1, 2, IP addresses, right down, 6, 7, 8. So rather than actually having to log into every device and remember what's where and whatnot, you can just do it all simultaneously, get it in one nice configuration file and saved, and you can grep through it for... In this case, I've got it for the word success and highlighted it with red to make it easy to correspond to each router. You can get it for whatever you like and do whatever you want really with this. So this is just a basic introduction into the very foundations and very basics of using ad hoc um, commands on Ansible. The next one, like I say, will involve playbooks, which are more advanced and they're actually much better. But I thought this little video could give you some kind of a taster as to what Ansible can do and why you should maybe try giving it a go on GNS3 and try to develop these skills because it will make your monitoring and configuration of networks, particularly large networks, a lot, lot easier. So I would really advise you do it and it's kind of fun actually as well. It makes things a lot easier rather than having to do things all manually all the time, which is quite repetitive and monotonous. So with that, let's cut the video now and hopefully I will get a proper Ansible video with the playbooks up pretty soon in the next few weeks and yep so that's that and I'll see you guys soon thanks bye